Hey everyone, it's morning here, but tonight is a full moon, and you know what that means. It means we're doing a lot of planting today. Yes. <laughs> so, we plant around the full moon and its cycles. We take a biodynamic approach to our crop planting. And so today, in the video, that's what we're going to be talking about. All right, we're inside now, and no Ashley. Ashley's gone. She's making her celery juice right now. So uh, I'm going to sit down and go through our crop plan. Now, our crop plan is a little bit different than most other crop plans out there because we have farm a lot different than most other farms out there. We are uh, biodynamic farmers. So um, what that means is there is a gentleman named Rudolf Steiner, he wrote this book here called Agriculture, and it's based on a series of lectures that he did back in 1924, I believe. And these farmers, they noticed that their crops had been de deteriorating, and they looked as, at Steiner as kind of the solution for why that was happening. See, in the 1920s, right when he perform this lecture that was right after World War One and right after World War One that's when DDT and chemicals were starting to become more and more widely used so Steiner he had a gift where he was able to connect the universe to how we grow our food and that's where the biodynamic principles were all started Okay, so now that you know what biodynamic farming is, let's talk about crop planting and how we are crop planting this year using a biodynamic approach. So one thing you don't want to do is plan out your crop plan two weeks before all your seed orders are due. Give yourself enough time to put the crop plan together, and then order seeds. So this year we did our crop plan in November, and we were ready to order seeds by December. And this is a big deal because you'll miss out on some great varieties. If you're doing biodynamic farming, you want to order your biodynamic Alamac. And this is your calendar, and this calendar is going to show you you know, optimum days and times for sowing, for pruning, for harvesting. Uh, also gives you a, a vast variety of crops and when to plant those crops and uh, on what days because there's, you know, there's fruit days, there's leaf days, there's root days, there's flower days. Well, what crops get planted within those periods? This this is like your, your go-to calendar here. So... Every morning we wake up, we look at what day it is, and that gives us an idea of all the crops that we're going to be dealing with that day. And I'm going to jump to my Excel spreadsheet next, and I'm going to show you here how I've taken this layout and actually made an Excel spreadsheet of it. So let's jump into that. Okay, so this is the plan. So you can see... We've got them all color-coded, just like you saw on the actual layout. You've got your celery, spinach, lettuce, kale, and then I've got the actual crop variety, what we're growing, how many days till it emerges, the days to maturity, and then I've got my nursery start date, the field planting date, and then my first harvest date. So I can type into the first harvest date Let's say I want to get this planted by 6-4-2020. Then it changes my nursery start date. And it tells me, okay, you need to get it in to the nursery by this date in order to harvest it by the date you just inputted into the Excel. Some other tabs I have on here are just the rows per bed, in-row spacing, how far they're spaced apart, my bedding feet, 
and just how many bunches we think we're going to get a week and that is const all that stuff is constantly changing based on my observations in the field and then we click the field bed plan and this is like a more detailed version of what we were just looking at so this is actually going to tell us everything we need to know about those crops in more detail so next we're going to jump into the planting and harvesting chart and this is awesome because this is going to tell you what crops grow at, at specific times of the year so we're never putting something in the nursery or out in the field that shouldn't be growing at that time we wouldn't put we wouldn't put tomatoes out in the field in October because we know tomatoes don't grow in October. So the planting and harvesting chart essentially shows us the planting windows and the harvesting windows for every single crop. Okay, next we have our seed list. So the seed list was pretty easy to put together. All you had to do was figure out the specific crops you were growing and then their spacing. So their in row spacing and how far they're going to be spaced apart and then you can do a rough calculation on how many seeds you would need you always want to order more seeds than what you actually need because not all seeds are going to produce and then when you actually get those seeds to produce and you transplant them into the ground some just might not take and then you need more seeds for those failures so it's always a good idea to order more seeds than you actually need you can see on my plan here it actually shows you the rows per bed the in row spacing and how far they're spaced apart and then I've included in my sheet here the rainfall totals because I want to know what the rains going to be like throughout the entire growing season and then we're keeping record of everything. We're keeping record of our successes. We're keeping record of our failures. Are we leaving crops in the, in the field for too long? Are we spacing them too far apart? Can we move them closer to get more crops in there? Um, what is the successions windows look like? Am I succession planting too far apart? Is, can, I, can I move that window closer together? And then you got to think of, well, what sort of insect pressure am I getting at what time of the year too because some insects only come around at specific times of the year do I have to cut my my window on specific crops uh, to a shorter period of time because we know we're going to come across those those insects and then of course market demand you know are we growing enough of specific crops we're we're growing everything based on what we eat which is the medical medium protocols and so we do a lot of celery and cilantro and stuff like that but that might not be what everybody else wants so we gotta make adjustments there as well so we can uh, eliminate the things that people don't like and grow more of the things that people do like <laughs> okay so I broke down the plan that was the entire plan now we got to take all that information and put it into a calendar. Well, how do we do that? And here I'll show you a quick example of how I converted all that information that we just looked at into a succession calendar. 